Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Lotus, President and Executive Director of the Center for Railroad Photography and Art. And in honor of our presenter tonight, I am wearing uh, my uh, yukata or a summer kimono from Japan. Uh, these are, uh, are worn for traditional events in Japan in the summertime. It's a lightweight uh, cotton kimono. And it's the one piece of clothing I brought back from the time I lived in Japan uh, 15 years ago now. I was up in uh, Hokkaido, the Northern Island. Our uh, presenter today is uh, Yuichi Uzeki, who's joining us from Tokyo, uh, his home. Uh, before we get to him, uh, just a, a couple of brief uh, um, announcements about the center. I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with our online programs and we really appreciate you tuning in to, to join us again tonight. Uh, we've started doing these uh, going back to March of last year or April actually, uh, right after the pandemic started. And we really appreciate everyone tuning in and, and joining for I think uh, just a wonderful variety of, of uh, presenters who have been willing to share their work with us. It's always fun for, for me to see people's uh, approach to railroad photography and art from all over the country and all over the world now. And we plan to continue doing these, uh, even as we look to, to do uh, more in-person events going forward. Uh, we're planning our next in-person conference to be uh, next spring in our usual time frame of April. Uh, that'll be in the Lake Forest, uh, just north of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we have not set a date for that yet. Uh, we're looking at probably the second weekend of April. And once we get that firmed up and have details, we'll get those out hopefully later this summer uh, with some preliminary information. We'll open registrations for that uh, in early January, right after the first of the year. In the meantime, we plan to continue doing online programs for the rest of this year. We will have a couple of in-person uh, receptions for a couple of our exhibitions. Uh, the first of those will be David Kaler's uh, The Railroad and the Art of Place. And that is opening at the Groman Museum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on Friday, uh, September 10th. Uh, David's gonna be in for that to do an opening reception uh, with a presentation and gallery talk. And that'll be our first in-person event uh, in almost a year and a half. And we uh, hope you can, uh, if you're in the, the upper Midwest, you might be able to come out and join us for that tonight. It'd be great to see everyone and share David's photography and, and uh, just reconnect after uh, so much time apart. We're also going to be having our Railroaders exhibition uh, featuring Jack Delano's World War II photography, uh, Portraits of Railroad Workers, is going to be at the Peoria Riverfront Museum opening in early October. And we're looking at probably doing an opening uh, reception there uh, the second weekend of October, uh, Saturday the 9th, I believe, will be the, the date for that. And we'll have more information about that on our website as well uh, once that is ready. Uh, all of the, the details for all of our, our events uh, and other activities are on our website, which is railphoto-art.org. Maybe Haley, you could drop that in the chat. I don't have my handy little uh, cue cards with me tonight. Um, and you can also see all of our past programs on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash railphotoart, all one word. And we'll be posting Yuichi's presentation in the coming days uh, as well after, after this event concludes. And in the meantime, we're continuing our publishing efforts and collecting efforts. Uh, we have uh, the new issue, uh, summer issue of our magazines out. We're already working on the fall issue, which is gonna be out around September 1st for our members. And we have our new book, uh, The Railroad and the Art of Place, an anthology, which is coming out uh, this fall. And there's details about that on our website as well. And in the meantime, our archives team is busy processing the close to half a million photographs that are now in our care. We look forward to sharing more of those on social media and elsewhere and at upcoming presentations. Uh, Adrian, our archivist, will have an update for you uh, later this fall with an online program. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions for us, never hesitate to reach out. If you have suggestions for future events or programs, we, we welcome those as well. Uh, so that's a little bit about what we're up to. I'm joined tonight with Haley Page, our Exhibitions and Events Coordinator. Uh, she'll be helping uh, run things tonight and, and we'll both be handling some Q&A uh, as that comes up later for Yuichi. And Haley, maybe you just wanna say a couple of quick words about how uh, the functionality on, uh, on Zoom works for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you look at the bottom bar of your Zoom screen, you'll see a chat button and you'll see a Q&A button. Um, the Q&A is where you're going to want to put any questions you'll have for Yoichi at the end of the presentation. We'll um, go through those after he's done. The chat is really for um, just communication between the attendees and the panelists. So conversation in the chat, questions in the Q&A. Um, and you also see up in the right-hand corner, there's a little button that says view um, with a grid. On there, you can change your view. Um, you can change it to speaker view, gallery. Um, you can have it to follow the, the speaker or the gallery. So that's just, you can play around with those as we 
um, go through the presentation, but it's completely up to you how you set it up. Oh, thanks, Haley. And uh, yeah, as she says, um, just make sure to put any questions into that Q&A feature. That just makes it easier for us to find them and uh, harder for us to, uh, to miss any. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that we get all of our questions to our, uh, to our presenter tonight. And Haley and I will be chiming in with some, some questions during the presentation. Uh, and we'll also uh, take all of your questions that we can get to at the end. So, so we welcome those. Uh, well, without further ado, uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our presenter tonight, uh, Yoichi Uzeki, who's joining us uh, from Tokyo, Japan, where it's uh, already tomorrow morning. Uh, Tokyo, uh, Yoichi is a native of Tokyo, and he is, I think, best known for his work in music. He is a very talented pianist, composer, and arranger. Uh, he received his bachelor's degree here in the U.S. at Temple University, and his master's degree and the Sir Roland Hanna Award from Queens College, part of the City University of New York. Uh, Yuichi started seriously taking railroad photographs after he opened his Instagram account back in 2015. He has since built that up to more than 11,000 followers. And if you're not following him on Instagram yet, I highly recommend it. He has some, some wonderful photographs there. He posts frequently. Uh, you can find him there at Yuichi Uzeki. And I'm sure he'll have uh, more to say about that. Uh, but in, in conjunction with his music and his world travels, he has pursued railroad photography in New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Chicago, and all over his native country of Japan. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I spent about a year and a half teaching English with my wife in Japan about 15 years ago, and we were fortunate to travel twice to Tokyo, and I was absolutely smitten by the railroad scene there. Um, the, the people hauling capacity of Japan's railways is like no other. And I think, um, you know, New York City subways is one of the few that can compare. And Yuichi has photographed both of those. And he's going to be sharing, uh, kind of comparing and contrasting the railway systems of New York and Tokyo in his presentation tonight about sunsets, uh, the, uh, called the, the sun always sets in the east and the west. Uh, so with that, uh, Yuichi, take it away. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Scott. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure to be here and, and uh, do my presentation today. And it's such an honor for me. And also, uh, uh, I have to apologize in advance that I'm, I'm still staying with my parents and my dad's watching an all-star game right now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess all tiny is throwing bits and, and see sports is bad too. So uh, if, he, if you guys hear some noise, apologize. I told him not to go do that though, but he's, you know, I guess he's being excited about it. And um, <laughs> that's, that's what he, he watches every morning, so. Anyway, so, uh, well, thank you. Uh, so I would like to talk about, well, first of all, I just showed a bunch of pictures from New York City, then move on to Tokyo and the surrounding area of Tokyo. And um, that's how I'm gonna do. So, uh, so yeah, I just start my uh, program then. So I hit the share screen and Let's see, share. Am I showing? Yes, and yeah, just hit the play button. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Okay, so this is my title. Uh, then always sets in the east and west because we always see a sunset. But I, uh, I found some significant difference between New York City sunset and the Tokyo sunset. And the last year during the pandemic and then, you know, it was not lockdown in Tokyo, but nothing was really going on. And I, uh, I decided to just go out and take some, you know, train photographies and um, I just found difficulty f shooting sunset because it's totally different from New York City and I tried to find a way to just uh, do that in here and then finally I guess I got to the point where I'm quite satisf satisfied what I do in Tokyo but anyway so let's, let's start uh, this program so okay Here's the one. So I'd like to start this all the shots from Queens and mainly Queens, have, I actually still have apartment or I rent apartment and still paying for my rent. And uh, that's where I live. So you see a bunch of shots from Queens. Uh, okay, the first one, it's of course iconic Queens Ball Plaza station, seven train. And that was, I think, a few years ago. And so I have to be there. And um, that was not intentional, but I saw beautiful, beautiful sunset. Probably the best sunset I've seen back then. 
this this photography is kind of interesting. This is how CVTC control based train operation works because those two trains get so close, but before the signal system, that that would never happen. But now it's it's possible. They can just get so close to each other. This is so busy. Another shot from Seven Train. This is the 40th Street station. I'm sorry, 46th Street station. Looking at the 40th, 40th Street. It's it's a shame, you know, you don't you don't get to see an Empire State Building from there anymore. Anyhow, let's see. Another shot from Seven Train. Seven Train is actually easy to capture the sunset, either summertime or winter time, because basically running east to west and go up the nose. Uh, it's quite interesting. I think the only line in New York City subway system that runs that direction and it's so easy to capture the train with sunset, probably as well as sunrise too, but I don't get, I don't, I don't really uh, wake up that early morning. So I always miss out all the sun, sunrise. Another shot from seven train. Yuichi, I was gonna ask yeah. you that. Um... Do you do you have a would you have a preference over sunsets or sunrises or is it just based on your sleeping schedule mostly that you go for sunsets? Uh, yeah, well, I saw a couple of beautiful sunrise, but I don't I don't take any risks just wake, waking up waking up in the early morning. I guess <laughs> I don't know. This has changed a lot lately. So I I work I wake up around six o'clock seven o'clock lately in Tokyo. So I guess I'm. I should be able to do that, especially winter time. Not not a summertime though. It's now so it's, in Tokyo. It's like sunrise is around like four forty, I guess four thirty, four forty. Mm -hmm. That's not possible. To wake up. <laughs> and I remember that from from Japan. It was when in Hokkaido. It was very difficult to get up for the sunrise, especially in in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, in Hokkaido. Yeah, it's, you go up nose and still using same time. So. Uh, this is one of my favorite shots. You can have one water center from uh, 56th Street and no, 52nd Street station. Another one from 52nd Street station. I actually usually make calendar each year and this is one of those shots. I, I put it in calendar every year, uh, this year's calendar. I'm thinking about making one Another one for next year, so I'll let you know. Let's see. This is what happens when it's some well, like, uh that was a few years ago, I think it's I think the ninth I think twenty nineteen I was standing just watching the sunset and it's, it's so really beautiful reflections on the over trucks and trains. This is one, one of my favorite spots in New York City. This is over overpass for a wheelchair or accessible <clears throat> uh, elevator shop. And then this is uh, Junction Booba station. You can see all the skyline in Manhattan. And um, I think it's it's better in the winter time because sun goes, sun sets in for the right hand side if it's summertime. Are there, are there five trains visible in that shot? Uh, I believe so. This is five trains. Wow. wow. <laughs> so Russia was, you know, especially Manhattan bound trains really, because they only place uh, locals. So mm -hmm. you see a bunch of trains lined up. Around like four o'clock, you see, you see a bunch of trains like that. Mm -hmm. I think this is, I took this back in April 2019. Oh, this is an old, old, old shot. I think more than, I think it's back in 2016 or 17, you still, you see all oh, 62 cars. I think this was the last car, last set serving the seven train before CBTC fully operation, in operation. So this is Corona Yard. Uh, please ignore you know, my uh, water, water Mac. This is a, a tower, Signal tower before the Willits, Metz Willits Point station. 
So the two second trains are actually hiding behind the tree. It's not sunset, but uh, I, I actually caught four trains on each truck. There's a four, four trucks here. The two are, uh, one, uh, one is actually connected to the yard and two are local and one is an express. And uh, I took, I caught four trains. Uh, this is one each on each trucks before. Actually, it's fun to, fun to wait for that moment. Yeah, no, that's one of the fun things about these really busy city railway yeah. systems. Yes, the same, well, especially in New York City, it's it's always. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't say this, but I kind of expect sometimes all the accident to happen because mm. after the accident, it's all the craziness happens, and mm. you, you actually get to see a bunch of trains lined up. Mm. <laughs> and then those these trucks are, tend to be straight because they actually build over the streets, mm -hmm. and in, in Japan, that's not legal that's not allowed to do that mm. yeah so there's nothing like l uh, elevated mm. train in japan if the elevation they they can't build the streets under the truck oh uh, yeah yeah there's that's like, low i know like the yamanote line that that typically has like shops and stores underneath the tracks is that yeah right? that's 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 that what they're going for now okay that basic idea is coming from either or interurban system in the United States back in 20 and or 10s. Hmm. And a bunch of railroad company here in Japan, they tried to build a department store at the terminal and build, you know, all the, all the develop, uh, build a bunch of houses alongside the line and try to drive the people. Hmm. And that's now what they're doing, especially JR East, they're focusing on real estate and uh, building shops underneath the truck. But they can't build the streets. I mean, they oh. can't build the road. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's a, I, did, I never realized that. Yeah, that's why it's all <laughs> trucks in Japan, not that straight. It's not <laughs> really going straight. It's, they, they, <laughs> it's going winding. So that's one of those, I guess, it makes it like New York City photos, really open sky. Uh. One of the reasons. <laughs> Okay, this is a classic location, Astoria Boulevard. You see city center, now it's, I guess it's, they changed the name though. I, I can't remember because I haven't seen it yet. So this is sunset. I think it's probably the most beautiful sunset I've ever, ever seen in, in, in my neighborhood in Ridgewood. Queens. Uh, this is, I took a shot from Fresh Pond Road Station looking at the Forest Avenue. And uh, this is actually the beauty of New York City sunset. I see if the sun, I can't, if I see some lights coming into my apartment, if I'm, I'm not walking, I just grab my camera and hop on the M train and get to the first uh, Fresh Pond Road Station and see the view like this. And you, I can catch it in the sky. And this was beautiful i think a couple of years i think this is also from nine uh 2019. you see a downtown brooklyn back in the background this is first avenue station uh the angle is not that great but uh i still see the sunset and also uh one world trade center right in the middle m train shot let's see <laughs> This is, uh, I think it's the only shot I took with my phone, iPhone. And uh, this is um, 104th Street on the air train. And uh, I remember this, this day, my, ca my camera broke, so I had mm. to do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that's one from Queens. This is Jamaica Station, of course, Long Island Railroad. And during the rush hour. Uh, yeah, of course, as you guys know, Jamaica Station is probably one of the best sunset location in New York City because sun ashes set behind the tracks. Okay, the Bronx. Uh, taking shots in Bronx is kind of hard because basically you ended up, uh, ended up facing south. So you get tons of sunlight during the day. So here's some shots from uh, Bronx. 
this is a little after the sunset, but you see all the skyline was already light up and also uh, Yankee Stadium back for back. I'm not sure if I, if this view is still available, uh, the blanks change a lot. So some, some locations no longer really good. So this is from four train to 176th street station. This is my favorite spot. Another favorite spot in the New York City system. This is two train, uh, 233rd street station. I love the, the vertical curves on the, on the track there as they're going up and down those grades. That's really, really striking with the long telephoto lens. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you can actually get the other way too from, uh, uh, I think, uh, 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 what's the stage? I'm sorry, I forgot. I think it's no, not Bonsai Avenue. Um, so you see, uh, oh, the station is actually has flat level and you going up slope, get to the next level and there's a station. So it's always like, it looks like almost mm -hmm. you climb the stairways. <laughs> uh, another vintage point uh, location. This is from uh, 178th Street Station. You see a Yankee Stadium too. So this is six train Eldo Avenue Station um, this station actually facing the West. So I think the one of few stations in Bro Bronx, you can actually catch the sun goes down. Uh, other shot from Bronx, you see, only see the color of the skies, but you see, you can see more details with clouds here. Another shot from, uh, uh, this is a uh, Winterlock station, I believe. The first station on the sixth train above uh, overground. Uh, this is another of my favorite spot in the Bronx. This is four train, 183rd street station. I've never tried to actually catch a sunset there, but uh, I happened to be there on a one day and then I saw this cloud and some nice glow in the sky and also some skyline in Manhattan too. Okay, the next one. This one's the last one from Bronx. This is from 20, uh, 219th Street Station and uh, looking at South. And you see the, the train, Manhattan bound train on the right there's a guy surfing. Can you see that? <laughs> Can you spot that as a person at the back? <laughs> yeah, he's hanging on to the back door there, isn't he? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I've, I've seen a few times because, huh. you know, I was hanging in subway system and I've seen two times, I think two, three times. Hmm. I was like, wait a minute, there's a train. There's a, <laughs> there's a person riding in the back of the train. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you, you don't see it that often then? You Not know. really. See, it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it is dangerous wow. though. Yeah. I still wow. remember because I, ha I have a bunch of followers and I followed many people from New York City. I think, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, there's a guy riding on the top of the cement train and it fell or something or mm. called Yikes. by police. I can't remember either or, but that was one of my followers. I remember. Wow. Yeah, I'd have to imagine you get caught pretty quickly doing that. Yeah, I think so. Nowadays, works. yeah, it's not really. <laughs> I think there's more people watching you lately. Yeah. Try to be safe, you know. Okay. All right. Shot from Brooklyn. Uh, obviously, it's, in, it's, it's a Brooklyn. If you try to catch captured Manhattan skyline with strains, you actually ended up facing nose. So it's also hard to do the sunset shot unless you are in the right location. 
So, this is Neptune Avenue. Look at nose, actually. So, using sunset light, mm -hmm. and you see all the reflection of Manhattan skyline. And uh, this, I never really tried this angle. I never found this angle until I somehow hang around the Neptune Avenue. Because I, I like to sh shoot from for nose, nose end of this platform instead of uh, this is from mid middle in the middle of the platform. So I never really actually realized how good it is from there. That's a great view of the skyline. Thank you. Yeah, I tried to try to find different angles lately. I mean, I haven't been there for years, but you know, I try to find a different angle yeah. in New York City. Because a lot of people just, uh, you know, now nowadays many more more people take subway shot and from famous locations or you know, well, you know, those locations we discovered or discovered. <laughs> anyway, oh, this is uh, actually Carroll Gardens, the Carroll Street near near the Carroll Street station. You see Verrazano Bridge, and also uh, this is the approach to uh, Smith Nine Street station. Next one. So this is uh, this is from Smith 9th Street. This is, I believe, this is the only way to catch train and the Statue of Liberty. I, this is, this is, this is like the best I could do. <laughs> and also sunset. <laughs> I think the June June time the sun sets around the Statue of Liberty from the uh, from Smith Nine Street. So I think you can still see it this time. Just, you know, beginning of July. I think the sun right. sets around there still. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, see uh, the, the 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 line the sign that says F the LED. Great. That. That sign, especially uh, uh, R one sixty train, that actually blinks so slow. Mm. So it's vice versa. I have to really, I, I have to slow my shutter speed. Mm. But of course, train is moving, and especially right. <laughs> starting from you know, from the side, it's really, mm. it's it's really hard to find the right right setting. Mm. If you do a one twenty fifth. Uh, uh, the shutter speed 125. I think you can capture the full circle. Okay. Of uh, our 160 cars. That's a that's a good tip for anyone heading to New York City for subway photography. 125th of a second to capture the, yes, uh, the yeah. full LED uh, train sign. <laughs> yeah, but it's really slow for a train shot. Train yeah, shot. yeah, the train needs to be going kind of slow. Yeah. But no, that's the only. I don't. I mean, I, I can I can recall, you know, older times when there were more tracks in the city, uh, being able to see uh, Lady Liberty there with a train in it. But I, I can't recall any any modern photographs other than yours that have been able to capture the Statue of Liberty with a with a train of any kind. Yeah, I uh, I try pretty much every every stations, but this is I think this is this is the only place. Yeah, that's yeah. Tough. All right, this is, uh, of course, probably the best spot for the sunset mm. in the entire system in Brooklyn, especially. This is the West 8th Street, a new Aquarium station. Looking at Coney Island, of course. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, you're going to see a couple of those. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I tried to do some something creative, the reflection of Fresh Wheels, uh, Wonder Wheels, actually with the sign says Broadway Express. Uh, I believe they, they don't use uh, R160 cars much anymore. They swapped it with uh, Queens Boulevard lines, CDBT project. No, I'm, I'm sorry, CBTC. All right, this is a little later from the same spot. Uh, Somebody else built the building in front of it. See blue stripe? That that building is relatively new. And if you are standing in the daytime, it gets pretty 
annoying. <laughs> it's, it's quite annoying. All right. This is the one, the sunset behind the tower, the parachute tower and the Q train there. I actually moved to uh, uh, Brighton Beach Street, uh, Brighton Beach Station, and uh, still see uh, Parachute Tower and a couple trains. This is uh, probably the limit that my camera can do. I use a uh, Canon uh, SX 740, and that's the compact. It's not really a huge camera. It's a really pocket, you know, it's a really small camera. So this is that this is probably the limit. If I can't I can't do this later. I, I mean I can't really do anything good after this kind of sky. All right, this is this one's old too. You see R32 cars at the Broadway Junction. Uh, Broadway Junction is actually another spot that you see a beautiful sky, but you can't I don't think I don't think you can you can catch the sunset there. But uh, still, it's a really wide open sky and there's, there's no building there. So it's a nice spot to uh, do a subway shooting. Another one from Broadway Junction. Okay, next one. Yuichi, do you do much yes. post editing with the the colors on some of those? Uh, I actually do personally because, uh, like, since I use my uh, cheaper camera, I have to do that. I'd rather just take whatever without shaking, brawling, then get to the, get my iPhone to do uh, editing. I use uh, something called Snap Snapseed so that I don't have to pay to out of V. Hmm. I mean, I'm thinking about moving on to light rooms and stuff like that, but uh, for now, it's okay with uh, the Google Snap Siege. Uh, this is from, uh, I believe, Chauncey Street Station on the J train. You see the spark too. Uh, the train with spark, that's, that's, uh, that's our 179 type car. That one is really easy to photograph because that LED sign is really fast. I tried, I tried to find how fast I could do, and then I found still, I think, two thousand per second. Still, we get this full circle, so it's easy. The next one, another one from Chauncey Street, with uh, uh, Empire State Building. I love this location. It's one of uh, another one, another of my favorite locations. Back to my uh, my neighborhood in Ridgewood. Uh, this is from um, Model Avenue, Wyckoff Avenue Station. <clears throat> Looking at Brooklyn, uh, downtown Brooklyn. Now they're building. They build all the all the new buildings, apartments, condos in downtown Brooklyn. So the skyline has changed a lot lately. I'm sure they changed more now. Another shot from same same exact location. So you'll you see to, different, different different skyline. Yeah, and you'll have to redo these after you get back and, and see how the skyline has changed. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And Yuichi, I just wanted to add, just knowing how much more great stuff you have, you might want to just pick up the pace just a little bit to make sure we can get through all the wonderful material from Tokyo too. Yeah. So, all right, this is a East New York yard. This is my only panning shot from New York City today. I love panning lately, but this is, uh, I think it's three years old. Uh, there's locations, I, I found the only location I could do and this is the L train departed from uh, Atlantic Avenue station. So this is my favorite part, Williamsburg Bridge. And at Williamsburg Bridge, special winter times, they get sunset inside the bridge. So you get more light here. So I will show you this. 
Okay, let's start from a rail fan window of old train approaching bridge. And this is the inside the bridge looks like. And of course I use a slower shutter speed and then, but the bridge inside the bridge gets pl plenty of sunset light. This one from uh, overpass in the middle of the bridge. Another one from the bridge. This is my uh, old camera because my, uh, the one I used broke. So I had to use, I had to pull out my old one. So before I move on to Tokyo, this is probably the last one. This is what I called William Williamsburg Bridge Hinge because the sun actually set right behind the bridge. All right, so I'm done with New York City. Let's move on to Tokyo. Great stuff. So this is different, so totally different. You see, oh, this is Bay, uh, Tokyo Bay, and the Keio line actually crossing the old canal and get to Shin Shinkibo Station. All right, the first one is old the Sumida River, and uh, the Tobe line actually crossing to, to get to Asakusa Station. What's the next one? It's, this is called Yuri Kambume. It's, uh, it's slightly different from tr real train, heavy rail system. But uh, this is the only place I could actually, I could say really Tokyo skyline because you see Tokyo Tower and also Rainbow Bridge as well as other as buildings. It's, it's hard to catch the Tokyo Tower with trains, I have to say. This is near the Nippori station. Uh, you see the sun actually set, and this is an express train series E 657. This is a train yard at the Magome. So this is for Asakusa subway line. And this is a yard Near, near Nishimagome station, which is the last stop. And this is the other, other side, this is looking at the east. So here's looking at west. So you see the sunset like this at the train yard. The Asakusa line is fully underground, even though it's really old, old one of these old subway lines. And except this uh, depot is outside. The next one. This is near Ochanomizu Station. Uh, this is Kanda River. The Kanda River is fully uh, controlled. It's not much flow, so it's dirty, really. But during the sunset time like this, it gets nice reflection. And you see a Marunouchi subway line crossing the river as well. So this is a close-up. And still, you see the skyline of Tokyo and the Marunouchi line, and of course, reflection of the sky. This is uh, also from Ochanomizu Station. Uh, this is a different bridge. And uh, th these are the so uh, Chuo line, the local line. See all the crowds from Tokyo, very humid. Uh, this is moved to, moved to Keio line, which actually run alongside the Tokyo Bay. And if Keio line has more open sky since like a new, new line and not much developed. So this is Shinkiba station, which is very high elevated because they have to cross two train lines and also uh, uh, Shuto Expressway. And they make a huge curve to get to the Tokyo station. They actually had to change the plan there. That's why they had to build a huge curve. They're supposed to go straight to a different direction. This is, a, this is from Kasai Rin, Rinkai Park station. And it's with the Ferris wheels. And there's a there. I used to go when I was high school. 
And uh, I found this station is really open still, even though you see all the wires and you know beams, but it's still, still fairly open. Move to different place in Tokyo. This is rather near my house, near home, near my home, east part of Tokyo. This is uh, the only, or well, two, two, one, one of two surviving tram system in Tokyo. It's called uh, Arakawa Line. And this line is more really a tram, like streetcar type of thing. The other one is Setagaya Line, but uh, they use streetcars, but they're completely isolated. They don't run the streets, but, but this Asakusa Line, I'm, I'm sorry, Arakawa Line. Another shot of this tram streetcar Alka line. This is from Machia Station. Uh, looking at or taking taking from uh, Keisei Line platform. This one's Yamanote Line. This is the only Yamanote Line shot I I show today. This is near Komagome Station, and um, obviously it's not. Of course, the Yamunote line is one of the busiest line in Tokyo and uh, not much open space, really. So it's, it's really hard to do a sunset shot there. It's a newer train than the ones I remember. Yeah. I believe this probably you took the older one, though. Yeah. Yeah, this one came out a couple of years ago. Sure. Yep. Yep. All right, this is uh, Yotsuya Station. The Yotsuya is actually right in the middle of uh, Yamanote Circle. The so Yamanote line is making loop, and the Yotsuya is right in the middle and uh, accessible by subway, the Manochi line, which is this, and also Chuo line. And this, this Manochi line actually goes outside because there's a valley. This is a little Yotsuya, yeah, the Ya means valley, and so there's actually little open cut space. Uh, somehow I just placed this here. It's back to a KO line. They're crossing the uh, canal. And also you see uh, the flat building is actually a swimming, international swimming center they use for Olympic game. All right, the so next one is a little east. It's an Oimachi line, the Tokyo line at the Jiu Gaoka station. Uh, Toyoko line is crossing above the, this platform. So creating a little shade, but the, the sunset, I just found, I happened to be there as well. The sun actually, sunlight cut through. All right. This is my favorite part, uh, place, location in Tokyo. Uh, you actually can catch this, the Shinkansen. So right near Numa, Numa Bay Station, Numa Bay Station. So this is Tokaido Shinkansen. Uh, this is Tokyo Monorail. I took this from uh, uh, Haneda Airport Terminal. And you see, uh, I think this is Tokyo Bay and also uh, Tokyo Monorail. The bunch of uh, the buses, the parking. This is from observation deck of uh, Kitatopia, I'm sorry, Hokutopia, I guess, and near the Oji station. And you see the Shinkansen, the Tohoku Shinkansen, uh, E5 and then E6 coupled together. And also E3 is coming up from, from bottom. By the way, this location is not really known for uh, sunset, so highly recommend it. Okay, the south of Tokyo is a near round area. So let's see. This is from Tama area. It's a more hilled and mountains, south of Tokyo. They actually developed, they built a bunch of houses like this. And also two trains, these, these are the different companies. The right one's KO, the left one's Odakyu. Both are goes through uh, Tama Center same same station and um, different companies. So you see different company. Obviously the KO line is doing better because there's longer cars, 
its left hand side, Odaku is shorter because not many people riding this, making detour, taking more time to get to uh, downtown Tokyo. So this is for freight rail fans. I don't really take much and you don't actually get to see many freight, freight trains in Tokyo, even though they do, they run. Uh, this is on a Musashino line, exclusively built for freight line and later on turned into a passenger railroad line. Musashino line, this is Yoshikawa station. This is the EF65. They used to pull more passenger trains, but, this, but no longer, there's none. This is shot, actually, I added, this is from yesterday, uh, two days ago. Uh, this is at the Misato station. Uh, happen to be this way. That this Misato station, this is actually old train yard, a uh, freight yard. And uh, they have more space there. And now they actually build a bunch of department stores and stuff. But the near, this, this is the end of it. The near Misato station, this is the end of it. So they don't, they haven't done anything yet. So you see it more sky and more wider space there. This is from Kanagawa Prefecture. This is the Sotetsu line at the Kashiwadai station. All right. Okay, this is really far. Uh, this is probably 30 miles from Tokyo. It's a Ryugasaki station. <clears throat> Uh, this is on Job Joban line and the express train running, zipping through actually. This is a street section, so they actually pick up speed. Which direction from Tokyo is this? This is northeast. Yeah, northeast, Joban line. It's on the Ibaragi prefecture. Okay, this is from this is at the Chichibu station, this uh, on the Sabe line. Uh, the left-hand side, is, this is called La View. This is a new express train. And the right side is uh, Series 4000 for local. The Chichibu is actually really mountain. They dig a lot of uh, uh, concrete. Okay, this is the one, one of my favorite shots. Uh, this is near the Sakura station uh, when they this is right before they actually plant, plant the rice or the rice field. So you see a little reflection. This shot is from Fukushima, it's really far. It's like probably at least hundred miles away from Tokyo. And this is the only shot from Fukushima. This is Tadami line, the headway is actually, I think it's four or five trains each direction every day. And I was lucky to be there at the right time. The crossing uh, uh, Aga, Aga River, I believe. It's an Aizu Wakamatsu city. This is uh, obviously, this is also from, this is a uh, Guma prefecture, the Tobe line near Watarase station. You see canola flower in front. So that was the springtime. So during the time, you see all the shade of uh, Mount Fuji as well. This is one of my favorite locations. This is near Hatagaya Station, the KO line. I don't know why, how they built this, but it's almost like a miracle. These are, those, these are buildings lined up on but the direction to the Mount Fuji is just right, right straight, extended of uh, the trucks. So you get to see this view. This is another shot from Numabe State, near the Numabe Station, looking at the Shinkansen. See the little small silhouette of Mount Fuji? That shape is so iconic, you can actually tell from anywhere if you see it. So this is all Kayama station. It's a Tokyo line. This is shape. You can see Mount Fuji from anywhere in Tokyo if you're in a higher level somewhere. This is near the sea. 
near the Enoshima. It's the Enoshima Electric Railway uh, near the Shichirigaoka Station. But uh, this is one of the famous station. And also this street, you see a bunch of cars. It's really gets crowded. Now it's like even even worse during the summertime. You don't want to even mess with it. Here's a Mount Fuji shot with subway. This is the Toza line near uh, Mioden Station. This is in Chiba Prefecture uh, near Kitakogane Station on the Jobon line. This is my favorite shot. This is near uh, Kazusa Minato station. And this, this is quite far. This is like, I would say 30, 40 miles from Tokyo. And you see the sunset. Also, this is Tokyo Bay. And the other side of the Tokyo Bay is actually Yokohama. So it's like misshaping, making a U shape, really. So it's interesting. If you look at the map, you see how close Yokohama and Chiba is. But if you take the railroad or drive, it's far, actually. You have to make it all the way to Tokyo and get to Yokohama. So these Keisei, Joban, and Sobe lines are really close to my home. So I usually grab on camera and then take a bunch of shots. So I may create a different section. So this is near Konodai Station. And this is Edogawa River which uh, it's, it's, all the shop you see is near my house. All right. This is the Arakawa River near Yotsugi Station with the Keihin Kyuko the, uh, series 1000 visiting the Keisei line, making a through, through service. So that the through service is actually huge in Japan. So you see a bunch of different companies trained in different trucks, different lines. So it gets really confusing. The next one. This is at the Takasago station. You see the reflection. And this is actually a really famous spot and, but not known for sunset shot like this. This is my recent shot near my house as well, and the Joban line. This one I tried last year. I, I had plenty of time during pandemic and I tried to do this. Let me try just the almost like sunset you know, right in between the, these two uh, uh, bridges. And um, you see that's like express service for job online, rapid service train. And right hand side is supposed to be a local train. I couldn't catch the two trains, so I, I did actually, but not this time. Mm. Well, it's still a stunning composition. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Another shot from Job Online. This is from Tennodai Station. Uh, yeah, there's a slope because I get to Abiko Station. Another my favorite shot at the Ichikawa station on the Sobe line. And yeah, around July, June, you, you see a sunset like this at the Ichikawa station. This is an aerial shot from uh, the beauty I link tower. Unfortunately, they're closed because of the COVID-19. I don't know why they remain closed though. They have no idea. Everything else open, but that the place, the stunning view. Okay, let me skip through this. This is another sober line shot. Local train with the sun setting. Let's get to my last section, the panning and long exposure during the sunset time. This is the Keisei line, Edogawa River near the Konodai station. I, uh, I showed it other one earlier, but the different time, different location. 
this one as well. This is the Monoch Line, the Yotsuya Station. And um, yeah, uh, it's hard to uh, it's it's hard to get the the side side shot in Tokyo. Not many, not much wider space. So if I found, it, I just try to do it every time. This is Narita Express train near Sakura Station in Chiba, and surrounded by all the rice rice fields. So uh, you see little little reflection there too. This is Takasawago Bridge in, on the KC line. And uh, Takasawago Bridge is like over Nakagawa River. There's a bunch of bridges there. So it's, it's, not, it's not hard to get this kind of shot there. This is recent shot as well. This is from a couple of days ago and near Odawara. This is, uh, of course, Shinkansen crossing Sakawa River. All right, this is a uh, Keio Line, Kaihin Makari Station. The so Keio Line is re like new lines really, only, only there for 30 years. So the structure is relatively different. This is my home station at the Kanamachi on the Joban Line. This is the last shot for this program uh, at the old Kayano station. I saw, I showed it to you with uh, Fuji, Mount Fuji series and you still you see it, but different, uh, different angle. And there's two trains on the Oimachi line and Meguro line train departed together. So this concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you so much. Thanks very much oh. <laughs> from my childhood. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, color coordinate your, your shirt with the train intentionally? I, I have no idea. My, my mom. <laughs> this is Takasago Station, by the way. It's like really 40 years, well, not 40 years ago, at least 35 years ago. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, wonder, wonderful show. Um, Thank you. One, yeah. one question I had in, in um, well, and you mentioned at the beginning how the sunsets are different between New York and Tokyo. And, and could you say a little bit more about how you think they're different? I would say, the, first of all, that the humidity, the weather. Mm. And um, we get more cloud in Tokyo. And uh, it gets really dry in New York City, even though humid still. But the shape, I, I guess, like, shape of the clouds are different there. I think in New York City, more solid and has shape to it. Mm -hmm. Here in Tokyo, you see more, more like somehow it's most like it's really misty and blur. You know, it's it's not really. Oops, sorry, mm -hmm. it's not really uh, like shape, shape, shape. I, I had a question as well, you, uh, Uichi. Is there a reason in particular that you're drawn to sunsets? Is it the the subject matter itself, or is it just kind of the time of day that you tend to go out and photograph? Uh, it's actually a little bit of both. And um, if I if I go out shooting, I probably usually have a time to do that. So I tend to stay until sunset, and then even after sunset. And um, I guess that's it. I mean, it's fun to chase the sunset, sunlight like that. It makes a difference, huge difference. And also, like I said, Tokyo, you don't, you don't see much iconic building as a background. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's no location that says, okay, this is Tokyo, mm -hmm. especially with trains, uh, except a few <laughs> locations. So it's really hard to say I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's not really enjoyable because I end up just taking train shots, which is boring. So I, I, I need something adds to it. And the sunlight, obviously, especially sunset, adds to it too. Mm -hmm. 
We had a, a couple of questions at the beginning, and I know you mentioned already the camera that you use, but could you could you remind us what kind of camera you use? Yes, and... my camera is Canon SX740. This is the one. Oh, yeah. And so how long is the, the telephoto lens on that? Like, what would be the equivalent for, like, a 35 this... millimeter? That's actually a good question, but uh, this one, I can't tell. It says 40, 40 times. This okay. is two, so it's... What, 2.0 meter, stuff, stuff like that. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty long lens. Yeah, it's, it's quite long. Well, someone else asked if, if you've ever had trouble with authorities when you've been out photographing on station platforms in either New York or in, uh, in Tokyo. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, to New York City, yes, I have once, once or twice. I was uh, doing long exposure at the end of the platform mm. underground. Right. And the people thought I was going to commit suicide, which is. Oh, not geez, true. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <That's>... fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I carry my camera with right. <laughs> on the train and stuff like that? Yeah, guess they don't know. In it's Tokyo, insane. though, instead, on the other hand, they actually try to block all the places. They actually place the fences and yeah. they put I remember, something. I remember you mentioning good. that in your last presentation. Yeah, and uh, I I don't like that personally. Hmm. And also, uh, Tokyo, they. There are more radio fans out there. Sure. And yeah, tons of more. And they, they, they don't have good attitude sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and especially okay. all the extra trains <laughs> running. So I don't even catch those trains anymore. I don't even bother. I would rather just uh, catch a sunset or a beautiful some scene with no more train, just mm -hmm. fine. So yeah, actually, cool. my point, my point, I'm sorry, my point yeah, is yeah. people are actually watching you in Tokyo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Weird. Yeah. yeah. They, they know, they know Ray fans out there doing something weird. So they're actually watching you. <laughs> but I don't care. I just, I just, I just do, I just, you know, because I travel, pay, pay my few, pay my fare and it's to pay my time and then go out there. So I just do whatever. Well, I don't cut the trees though. Right. <laughs> I don't break fences, but you know. If I reach out, if I need to reach out, I just do it. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and in Japan, you can always buy the, you can buy like the station platform tickets, right? If you just want to go out on the platform. Yeah, you can do that too. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, the angle is really limited. So, right. yeah, right. and the more people do that. So I'd rather just get up, you know, go out the gate, pay, pay the sure. fare and walk a couple of minutes and do something different. Um, there was a, a question about the location back in, in New York City, your very first shot of yeah, the Scott, F train. I, I, actually, I think oh, I have that, that picture queued up. Let me yeah. hear that real quick. I think I it's the one that um, referenced this uh, yeah. this image right here. Yeah, this is this is Neptune Avenue. Neptune on Avenue. The F, F, F line, the Culver line. And uh, I, I have more shot from the end of the platform, the Manhattan side was trained with uh, Empire State Building oh, only cool. the back, as a right. background, but I kind of stepped back. Hmm. I was standing right in the middle of the platform looking at the Manhattan like this. And I, f I found this look at uh, this angle. Yeah, that's and that's like I, almost I all the way down at the end of the F line at the far end of yeah. the foot, right? Yes, the Neptune Avenue is like uh, sort of stop from Coney Island. Okay. I'm sorry, two, second stop. Yeah, that's a that's a great location. Yeah, Neptune Avenue is another one. It's pretty good. Hmm. Let's see. Well, someone else asked if you ever, if, uh, with all this looking into the sun for the sunsets, do you have like special sunglasses or other eye protection that you wear for for these photographs? I actually should, but <laughs> I don't. I've been. I've been I've been taking the sunset for maybe a couple last couple of years, so yeah. I need I need to have uh, prescription sunglasses. <laughs> oh, sure. I, I can't see nothing with my sure. without my glasses. So, so one another question I had, yes. uh, and I'm just curious about like the interplay between different kinds of art, and I'm just wondering if as a musician, 
if that influences your photography at all, or if your photography I guess, ever I guess influences your music. I guess it does. It does. Yeah. Uh, I guess I, it does. I mean, I'm not sure how much affected on my piano playing, mm -hmm. but I can go the other way, especially uh, uh, when I when I when I do the chart as well as play, especially improvisation stuff, if improvises music. I try to focus on one thing. I don't, and um, you know, do you know bento, the Japanese? Oh, of course, yeah, box, yeah. Bento culture. Right. You can see it's many things in one box, right? Hmm. At least like twenty stuff. Right. And I, I, that's how Japanese are actually. We are, we are educated to do that somehow. It's a culture. I guess it was a cultural background. So we love to see many things in one shot, hmm. but that's not. That's not what it's supposed to be, especially the art art field. And, and I I have to reduce all the stuff and try to focus on one thing, at least maybe two. And then that I put in a you know photography. So if I say train and sunset, that's it, or train with trucks reflection or train with background. So I try not to do all the stuff. If I get the three trains on one shot, I'm lucky. But still, yes. <laughs> or five. That's that's that's, that's one. Yeah, I'm lucky. But that's one thing. If I see it, three three trains and four trains lined up like that, I try not to do the background. I just try to focus on the three trains. That's a special moment. But that's that's one special thing to stand out. Well, where do you want to go next once you can start traveling again more? Uh, that's a good question. I, uh, I probably, you know, I uh, always looking for just coming back to New York City. I still keep, sure. you know, paying my uh, rent in New York City, which <laughs> right. people say it's stupid, but you know, I got a bunch <laughs> of clothes. Not cheap. And clothes yeah, so I can't really get rid of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and in Japan is in the state of emergency again. Right. And uh, my, uh, my walks, walking situation is not really improved yet. So yeah. I might have to spend more time here <laughs> in Tokyo. So yeah, next, next thing. I'd love, you know, I'd love to just come back to New York City to see what, how it changes, how yeah. all the stuff changed. Oh, yeah, places like New York. I mean, every place changes fast, but I feel like places like New York change yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Especially the past year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can actually travel in Japan pretty much any, anywhere. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really matter to me sure. anymore. Are there any places in Japan that you haven't photographed yet that you want to? Uh, yeah, many places. Because I think I started 2015 July 30 31st I think that's the first date I started Instagram and I like like Scott introduced me you know and I got serious with photography since then so I haven't been any places much places yet many places yet especially North mm. I haven't I haven't been Hokkaido since I started photographing mm. Well, you have to go to Hokkaido. Say hello to it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, should, actually. That's the place that could actually give you some recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was supposed to be there last couple of years ago. No, last mm. year, actually. Yeah, right. Did I do that? Yeah, last year. I mm. uh, I booked my flight, and I, I pretty much was ready to go. But uh, I think the week before or so, mm. that, that, this, kind of, this stuff, and then the college had to shut down. So. Right. Well, I hope you can uh, hope you can get up there soon. Yeah, I hope so too. But still, so many college kids that this, you know can't do anything. They can't right. really play together, play music together. They can't yeah. really. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. We are so yeah. behind, though. Anyway. Yeah. Well, that's that. <laughs> used to better times. Oh yeah. Well, Yuichi, thank you so much for sharing more of your work with us and putting together just a wonderful presentation. I don't know if you've been watching on the chat, but there's been lots of lots of nice uh, compliments oh, yeah? and comments coming in. Yeah. So, oh, thank you. Thank you um, really so much. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and I'm glad you enjoyed tonight's show. Um, Yuichi, thank you again for sharing your work with us. I found my, I did find my cue card, so we will have this up 
uh, in the not too distant future, probably uh, later this week, Haley. At, yeah, let, me, uh, let me drop that link in the chat okay. again. Yeah, youtube.com slash railphotoart. You can see all of our past presentations there, including Yoichi's previous presentation. And we'll have this one up um, probably by the end of this week or early next. And any other announcements? Or those are all on our website at uh, railphoto-art.org. And I'm sure we can see everything on there. Yeah. Uh, tune in there. And again, we'll uh, let's see. Our next online presentation will be at the end of August. Uh, that'll be a fun one. We're talking with Matt Donnelly from Amtrak about Amtrak's uh, paint schemes and marketing uh, over their 50-year history, which uh, which they're celebrating now. And that is going to be Wednesday, August 25th. Is that right, Haley? That's correct. Yep. Right. Seven p.m. And we'll have information about up about that hopefully by the end of the month. So yeah, you can register for that once uh, once that's posted, and that should be another great presentation. Hope you can join us for that too. Well, Yoichi, thank you again. Uh, it's uh, just a treat to see, to see more of your work from uh, both the East and the West. Um, keep it up and, and keep in touch and come see us when you can get back in, uh, into the States. Yeah, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to practice, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I've been practicing more panning shot lately, so Good. <laughs> the next no, one those <laughs> might are be great panning to, one. <laughs> those are great I'm, to see. Planning, planning right. for more panning. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's been a great time. I had so much, so much, so much fun just doing this. Thank you Good. so much. Well, we'll, we'll keep tabs you on uh, Instagram and uh, and hope to see you soon. Yeah. Also, shout out to Todd too because he. Yeah. Oh, Todd Malanka, yeah, so yes, our, our yeah. board member who made the the original introduction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, but we'll we'll pass along those regards too. Yes, absolutely. All right. Great. Thanks, Yuichi. Thanks, Haley. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. See you next month.